Okay, hello guys. So I am Katie. Um, you might know me as KB Does Art on Instagram and Twitter and things like that. Um, and I'm just um, an art new media student who's kind of exploring this uh, world of 3D modeling. And I kind of thought that I would walk some of you guys through it um, who might want to be getting into it. I only started doing it like five months ago. And um, I feel like I've learned a lot and I, I want to kind of introduce some other people to it because it's a really cool software and I believe it's free for students. So that's awesome as well. Um, so yeah, I'm just going to be walking you through the basics of Maya. Um, this is basically what it opens up to, I believe, for you guys. Um, and this is basically like your viewport. If you press the space bar while you're hovering in it, um, it'll give you four different views. So let's go back to our original one. To get back, just press your space bar. And then um, up here, where it says poly modeling, go ahead and click a cylinder. So if you're going to um, maybe like view this from a different view, go ahead, press space again. And now you can see, oh, okay, so this is the top view. This is where we see it from the very top, like a bird. And then this is the front view, and then this is the side view. Um, so just press space to kind of get into either of those um, menus. You have to have your cursor hovering into it. So if you have your cursor over here and press space, it'll take you there. And then to get out, you just press space again and do the same thing for all the other menus. So I usually model in perspective um, just because I find it a little bit nicer. Um, but we will be using front view for some of our models. So just stay tuned for that. So um, the next thing that we're going to want to figure out is uh, navigation. Navigation is super important when you are learning a new software. Um, Maya basically goes off of an alt uh, navigation system. So um, for my keyboard, I'm on a, I'm on a Mac. So um, that's basically called the option button on your keyboard. So just go ahead and hold it. Now if you hold the alt button and then drag on your left click on your mouse, you can see it's basically rotating your viewport. Now, if you still hold Alt and then go ahead and hold your right click and drag, you can see it pans us in and out. Now, I do recommend having a three button mouse for this because if you have the third button, when you hold Alt and press the third button, you can see you can move your screen. So that's basically just a rundown of navigation for you in Maya. Next, let's go ahead and cover selection. So there's a couple ways to select things in Maya. What you want to do is you want to hover over your object and hold your right click. This basically opens up a menu of um, different ways you can kind of choose what you want to select next. So let's say I wanted to select a face of the cylinder. I would then select face, so just drag down and hover over it. And now I can select any face on this cylinder. So in order to select, go ahead and click Q. That's basically like your basic selection tool. You could also kind of see it up here. This is um, basically just your select tool if you want to not use keyboard shortcuts. Um, so what I usually do for selection, if you don't want to select through a mesh, hold tab, and then you can uh, select multiple faces at once. The same thing happens with shift if you're a shift user, but Shift actually has you drag and select it. So as you can see, that's what it looks like. On the back, you see that somehow we've selected some of the faces, but I was never selecting any of the back explicitly. So basically, if you are not holding tab, what Maya will do is actually select through the mesh so that if you were to select all those faces, it selects through the mesh. But if you're holding tab, it will only select the ones that you select in the front, not any in the back. So next, what we're going to kind of run through is some transformations. So let's say we wanted to rotate this cylinder. First, you want to right click it and go into object mode. That way we are selecting the entire object. We're moving the entire object. Now, if you click W, you can see this uh, little navigation cursor pops up. So this is basically your basic move tool. So we can go up, it's all across the X, Y, Z axis. So if you hold control while dragging on any of these, it'll lock some of the um, 
it'll lock the other two in place. So you can only move it along one of the axes, basically. And then if you just drag that middle button, um, you can just move the object like crazy. So next, if you press E, this is our rotation. So the same thing, you can rotate it any way you want. You can go crazy if you hold the uh, light blue one. If you hold control, you can do the same for the rotation. You move it only on one axis. And then if you press um, R on the keyboard, this is basically your scale function. So if you click just the yellow box in the middle, you can just scale it up or down universally. But let's say you only want to scale it taller or smaller or so something like that. Uh, you want to hold control and then just um, scroll on one of the uh, cursors, either the red or the green or the, the blue one, and then it'll change it depending on which axis you are holding control on. Um, so yeah, that's basically just like a quick rundown of navigation, selection, and transformation. T is basically like your transform manipulator. Um, we'll discuss that a, a little bit later. We kind of need to actually uh, model something to explore that. And then Y is basically just repeat your most recent command. So that's basically just the QWERTY uh, rundown of how things run in Maya. So just remember that Alt is your navigation um, and then QWERTY is what you use for transformation basically. And then what I do want to also run down really quickly is something kind of cool. So if you press three on your keyboard in object mode, three will basically do subdivision surfaces. So that kind of smooths out your object in kind of a cool way. We're going to be using that a little bit of modeling. If you press one, you'll go back to your normal object. Um, it can be super useful, but I would advise you not to model in subdivision surfaces because it can look a little weird when you go back into um, your normal modeling mode. Um, so yeah, just keep that in mind. It is kind of cool to um, look at it in that way. Uh, you can actually model entirely in that way, um, but I am not super experienced in that. So I just model uh, normal and then you can change it into, um, you know, subdivision surfaces. One more thing um, before I forget, um, if you want to change the background, right now it's like a bluish grayish color, you can just do Alt B and it'll give you some different options. So like black, there's gray, there's white, all those different kinds that you can kind of uh, choose from. What I would also recommend is that if you're starting to get into really big Maya files, like you're starting to texture objects, you're starting to have more references in it, you should be working out of a project directory. So if you go up to file and click set project down at the bottom, it'll have you set your project somewhere. So usually it makes it in a default folder already. You can totally use that default. That's a great use. Um, but it, let's say you wanted to work in like one separate folder. So like I have a folder for tutorials. Uh, you can set your project as that, and then it will all save into that folder specifically. That's super useful if you start using really big projects, um, but you can also just save your scenes individually by doing Command S or just uh, Control S, and you can just save them um, anywhere in your laptop individually, um, but that can be a little um, scary, especially if you are sharing your, your files with someone else. A project directory can make it really easy for them to navigate them and, and do that kind of thing. So I would highly recommend working out of a project directory. If you aren't, I forgive you, it's okay. Um, work whatever makes it easiest for you. But um, yeah, I also thought that I would run you uh, really quickly down about these buttons up here because they are really useful. So let's just make a cube really quickly. Right now you can see this one's highlighted. If I turn this one on, you can see now it becomes a wireframe. So now I can see through the entire mesh. Now, if I click on this one, it basically has like your wire mesh and your shading, which can be useful too. So now you can see I've got like a dark line. I don't usually model with it on because it makes me a little confused, um, but it's totally up to you. Um, and yeah, that's basically just a quick little rundown of those, those, especially the wireframe one, super, super useful. Um, but if I've missed anything and you guys want me to go back and cover any of the basics, let me know. Um, I'm human. I make mistakes. I don't cover every base. Um, so let me know if I missed anything or if you just have any questions in general. Um, I'm not an expert, but I'm 
open to learning. So yeah, let me know. Okay, so I think that's about it for a good little rundown. Um, in the next video, I'm going to go ahead and start like a quick little tutorial on like a basic object. And um, you guys can kind of follow along and uh, yeah, kind of learn Maya with me. So stay tuned. Uh, follow me on all the other social media stuff. If you have any questions or if I forgot anything or, or anything like that, go ahead and comment below. Um, but yeah, let me know what you guys think. And I'm really excited to make some more of these videos because I really like teaching. And um, I think that some people will really uh, get something out of it. So yeah, stay tuned for more and I'll see you next time. Bye guys.